Good day. Uh, today's topic lecture is uh, cluster analysis. My name is uh, Mikola Yatsku. I am an associate uh, professor at the Department of Systems Analysis and Computer Modeling, the Faculty of uh, Radio Physics and Computer Technologies, the Belarusian State University. Uh, the goal of the lecture is to define the main elements of cluster analysis that to be uh, used while developing and applying the cluster analysis algorithms. Uh, today uh, we have following uh, outline. We start with uh, formulation of clustering problem, then we go to stage of cluster analysis, uh, types of the clusters, uh, distance metrics for the data objects, then we consider mathematical characteristics of cluster, uh, criteria of the cluster quality, the R implementations uh, such as uh, functions DIST and DAISY. So now we go to first question is uh, formulation of clustering problem. Uh, at the beginning I would like to give uh, one definition of cluster analysis that uh, was given by the scientist Trion in 1939. And the, the definition is the solution of problem of partitioning a, a set of elements without training is called cluster analysis. So, uh, cluster analysis does not require a prior information about the data and divide, uh, divides the set of investigated objects into a, a groups of uh, similar data into the clusters. Uh, such that in ongoing analysis we can analyze not the entire cluster of objects but only the, its re representatives. This helps to reduce large amount of data and to make them compact and intuitive. An example of uh, clustered data is shown in these uh, two figures. On the left side we can see the scatter plot of uh, iris data, famous iris data, we may see 150 objects, these are flowers in the coordinate or variables petal length and petal uh, width. As you can see there are objects and uh, uh, you may see two groups of data. If we make uh, cluster analysis we will purely see three clusters, C1, C2, C3 colored in three diff different colors, uh, black, red and white, that correspond to two uh, flower species as, uh, such as Setosa, Versicolor and Virginica. So this is example showing uh, what we have uh, at the end of cluster analysis. So we have data and then at the end we have cluster data. Uh, it means we have several clusters, three clusters like in, in this example. So now uh, I go uh, more deeply in definition of cluster analysis problems with, uh, with uh, an example of uh, data set. So let it be a finite uh, set of objects uh, which uh, are shown here as x1, x2, xn and uh, this uh, data object are characterized by k features or variables, they are also called x1, x2 and so on uh, until xk. These are independent variables and we have uh, the column which is called y, this is uh, dependent variables. This is class label which should be defined uh, during the cluster analysis. So, in general case, it's necessary, necessary to cluster the object x1, x2 uh, and so on until xn into k classes. The object classes a1, y1, y2, yn are not predefined initially and should be determined during the cluster analysis. Uh, the main, the main pu purpose of cluster analysis are the first one is simplifying the further process, processing of data. It means that we have uh, these cluster groups and we can work with each of these cluster groups 
uh, separately or individually, we can uh, uh, make following follow-up analysis, analysis, including, uh, for example, regression, forecasting, classification, and so on. Uh, the second goal is data compression. It means reduction of, of the amount of stored data and uh, leaving one most re representative uh, data object for further processing. Uh, third goal is allocation of untypical objects. Untypical objects. Uh, this uh, are those objects uh, that have uh, not typical behavior in uh, comparing with other clustering objects. Uh, for example, this may be uh, outliers or some instance, uh, instances uh, regarding anomaly detection and other reasons. And the for fourth purpose is uh, building a hierarchy of a set of objects. So this is a, a very popular uh, demonstration, for example, in bioinformatics uh, while uh, construct, constructing uh, phylogenetic trees. Let's consider a stage of cluster analysis. Uh, and we defined four main stage, stages. The first one is uh, future selection. Uh, during this stage, uh, we select most informative features, x1, x2, and so on, xm, from the data, se data set or data table. Uh, this we do in case if not all uh, features have uh, high priority, uh, they uh, may be, uh, might be useless in the sense of uh, noise and uh, duplication and so on. The second stage is uh, clustering algorithm design. Here we choose the most, uh, most optimal algorithm for this task. Uh, the particular uh, cluster analysis algorithms uh, we will not consider today in today's lecture, but this algorithm, algorithm will be uh, presented during the summer school here. The third uh, stage is cluster validation. It's a confirmation of the reliability of received clusters. Fourth stage is result interpretation. So we have to uh, interpret somehow the obtained data clusters. Uh, many important task, tasks in uh, cluster analysis are concerned with types of data and in particular data clusters. Let us consider main uh, data clusters. And you can see several examples of data cluster. Uh, the example in, in the figure, in the top to left figure, it's a band clusters. You can see these uh, clusters have a structure of bands, so they are not uh, spherical cluster. The next uh, type of clusters, we call them clusters with centers. So you may see pure centers of these clusters and they have a spherical shape in multidimensional space of parameters. Then very interesting group of uh, clusters they, you, you may often see during the real experimental research. Uh, clusters connected by jumpers. You, for example, here you can see three clusters, but uh, some jumpers made by this uh, object bridge. Uh, the next uh, example of clusters are clusters with noise. It means that we have some clusters, but we have also a random objects randomly distributed via the uh, variable space, and they are uh, like a, a noise in our data. This is, uh, may uh, slow down the cluster analysis process. Uh, several more examples. It's uh, overlapping clusters. As you see here, one cluster on the top of the second cluster. 
The next examples clusters can be formed not by similarity, but by other types of regularities. And uh, most difficult situation when we don't have clusters at all. So clusters may be absent altogether. So I should uh, make a note that each cluster in method has its limitations and allocates clusters of only some types. After we uh, considered uh, main types of clusters, uh, then we go further in uh, cluster analysis and we define uh, next important elements of cluster analysis. So to find a specific solution to the cluster analysis problem, one needs to sp specify three elements. The first element is the way objects are compared with each other or a measure of similarity for the objects. The second element, the way of clustering. How we uh, combine small clusters in bigger clusters, bigger clusters in even bigger cluster and so on, up to have a tree of clusters or one big cluster. So we will not consider today this uh, element. This we continue later during our summer school. And the third element establishes the number of clusters. So how many clusters we have in our data. data. This is we will not consider today. Okay, before I uh, go to some uh, more heavy equations, I would like to show you an example with the notation sum, which is very often used in the uh, uh, theory of probability, mathematics, and also in today's lecture. So let it be three variables, x1, which is equal 5, x2, which is equal 10, and x3, is equal to 20, and we need to sum the three variables. So what do we do? Usually we just write the sum of three variables, x, x1 plus x2 plus x3. Uh, Simply we can write this uh, equation in very compact form using, using the Greek uh, notation symbol sigma. You can see sigma here. So we just write sigma x i, i is an uh, index for this symbol, its, li its limits from 1 up to 3. So this is a compact form of writing sum. Of course, in this example we have just three data elements, but imagine if you have like 1000 elements that very uh, help to us to write comp compactly uh, our uh, numbers. And uh, finally we have the result. So written with this notation symbol sig sigma, and actually uh, 5 plus 10 plus 20, we have 35. And this is the result. So the sum notation, notation symbol, symbol sigma, which will be used very often in my following equations. Okay, so we stopped at the distances between objects. Now we continue uh, uh, the consideration of these uh, measures. So similarity between objects can be measured. For example, it could be equal to distance between points in future, sp uh, in future space. Uh, and we start from uh, uh, consideration of uh, most important uh, measures for distances between the data objects in future space. The first one is Euclidean distance. The equation number one, you, you may see this uh, e Euclidean distance in the terms of uh, coordinate of our data object. It's often used in the case uh, the far objects need to be uh, weighted heavily. Uh, for some uh, measures, I prepared uh, figures uh, from the Iris data set, and you can see uh, some definition of the distances in these figures. Here, the Euclidean distance, this is just a simple geometrical distance between objects x1 and objects x2. Uh, this is the most popular, quite intuitive and simple way to calculate the distance between objects and to measure the similarity of these 
uh, data object. So we can calculate not just between two, but between pairs of this data. Uh, the second uh, distance measure is st standardized Euclidean distance. It's uh, necessary to exclude heterogeneity in the data. Equation two. In this case, we normalize our data by division uh, uh, variation for each column. So it means that uh, data that have different variation will be now with uh, similar variation and this uh, will help us to improve our analysis. An example of such uh, heterogeneic data is shown in the figure from IRIS data. Uh, so here I have uh, box plots which shows to us variation for different columns or features or variables of our data. And you can see that some one feature is petal length has much bigger variation than others. So this is uh, quite uh, demonstrative, demonstrative examples how uh, heterogeneity in the data can be. Uh, and uh, I showed a, a simple program code made in R programming language, uh, which shows that I multiplied uh, this column by factor of two the petal length is multiplied by two. Then I showed with box plot this four data columns and I see bigger variation in this data set. So this variation was done by me synthetically, just to show the principles for which we use the standardized Euclidean distance. Uh, the third distance is uh, city Manhattan distance, which is applied to reduce the effect of outliers. So schematically, I show this distance as uh, this, uh, this way in the figure between objects x1, I x2. So it's, uh, the definition goes from the uh, Manhattan district or t any typical district in the big city. We can see that we may go along the streets in this district. So we can, we can go like this by blue way or we can go by red way. So, or by yellow way. So what is important is that the red, yellow, and blue passes are equal and all have the shortened lengths. So what is, and that is different from the green line, which uh, corresponds to Euclidean distance. It often helps to reduce the effect of outliers. That, that's, that is why we use the Manhattan or city block distance. The next one is uh, Minkowski distance, which is uh, a kind of generalization of Euclidean distance. It accounts more accurately the weights for outlier objects than the Euclidean distance. The equation you may see here. So it uh, includes exponential uh, parameter p, which, uh, which can be set from one to up to infinity by the user, depending on the task that he solves. Uh, the fifth distance is Chebyshev distance. It determines the difference between objects by one feature, as in, in the case of presence of one feature of a very high variation. Again, I put here the diagram of, uh, of box plot, and uh, here you, you may see even bigger variation in the feature petal length. Uh, so the equation for Chebyshev distance is equation number five, which is e equal to maximal distance, uh, ma maximal difference between the coordinate feature with the highest variation. Okay, as soon as we calculated the distances between pairs of objects in our data, we may calculate so-called uh, the distance matrix D. The distance matrix D combines all uh, distances between pairs of objects. For example, here you can see this, uh, 
the distance d12 to this is a distance between first and second object. Then the next one will be d13 between first and third object and so on uh, up to d1 n, distance between first and object with index n. On diagonal we have uh, zero distances between uh, because the distance bet uh, between uh, the object itself is equal to 1 and the matrix will be symmetrical according to the main diagonal. Typical this uh, distance matrix is used in uh, cluster analysis algorithms, in many cluster analysis algorithms and the uh, principle is following. As soon as distance between uh, some objects less than a, a certain sh th threshold, then we combine this uh, cl uh, objects in one cluster. Uh, in future lectures, we will consider in more detail this distance matrix and we will speak more about this. Okay, next let us consider mathematical characteristics of clusters, which are often used in cluster analysis algorithms and helps to uh, simplify uh, our data analysis and make some important conclusions. So, uh, we uh, consider today three characteristics. The first one is the cluster center. is a geometric mean place of points in the future space. So, the equation 7, as you see, this is just a simple ar arithmetic mean. And if we have a data cluster in the, for example, scatter plot of some selected features, we see that this is just the center of our data point. So this uh, shortcut of black cluster from uh, scatter plot for iris data. Okay, uh, the cluster center. The next important cl uh, cluster characteristics is uh, the radius. So the radius of cluster is the maximum distance of the object from the center to the cluster in the feature space. So you see here distance from the center to the most furthest object in, the, in this cluster. Equation 8 defines uh, mathematical formulation for the radius. And third characteristic of cluster, uh, which uh, mainly characterizes the spread or scatter of points within the cluster, is a standard deviation. That is the measure of the scatter of points in a cluster related to the cluster center. So you can see the area, which is characterized the, this length, which is standard deviation. So we have uh, three quite simple characteristics of cluster, the cluster center, the cluster radius, and the standard deviation. Okay, the next step, we need to introduce uh, efficiency of cluster analysis and to see if it was successful and not successful, uh, if our cluster is compact or not. So we should put inside uh, anyhow a principle. Uh, usually in clusters, the intercluster distances are uh, less than in intercluster distances, as shown in this example. So you can see a data set in, data set in three dimensional space, which are characterized by three clusters. And intracluster distances, you see here, much less than inter, intracluster, intercluster distances. So we have good clustering when intracluster distances are minimized and intercluster distances are maximized. Uh, regarding this principle, we con consider next uh, several uh, criteria for cluster quality of or, uh, quality of clustering object. The, the first one is the sum of distances to the center of cluster, equation 10. Equation 10. So uh, the sum of distances to centers of clusters to which objects are assigned should approach the minimum value. So this uh, criteria 
should tend to uh, minimum value for the successful clustering. Uh, the next is the sum of intra-cluster distances between objects in clusters. Okay, uh, it's uh, equation 11. The sum of squared distances to the center of clusters to which objects are assigned uh, should tend to minimal, to minimal value for uh, successful clustering. So there are a number of even more uh, complicated uh, uh, qu criteria for cl clustering quality exist. We today stop just with these two cr criteria. So, uh, having studied these uh, important elements of cluster analysis, I would like uh, in a further slides to show you several examples uh, taken from R package, which includes uh, R implementation the function dist and daisy. These functions are uh, devoted for calculating distances between data objects. And you can find these uh, functions in R package, uh, but you need to uh, preliminary install the R packages such as uh, stats, stats and cluster. Okay, let's consider in more detail these two functions. The first one, very popular function, dist. It calculates distances between two objects. And it has several uh, variables as entrance x, then method, and diag. Where x is your input data, the method indicates the distance measure for uh, calculating the similarity between our object. You can choose Euclidean distance, Manhattan or city block, Minkowski distances and so on. These uh, distances were considered in uh, our previous slide. slides. Then the next uh, entrance parameter is uh, di diag, which allows to form a matrix of distances in forms of square matrix, like we had in equation 6. So otherwise, the results will be presented in line or in string. The third parameter, stand, which allows to standardize the input data matrix or to make the procedures of centering and scaling of column of your data. So this is a function dist. And again, uh, an example from our package which is shown in this box. So in the first line, I read the data from the data set, uh, data file uh, data1.txt with help of function read.table. We have now a uh, matrix or data frame of our data. Then this uh, matrix go to as uh, input variable to the function dist, and I put parameter drag to the position of logical variable true, and the result will be calculated, uh, will, will, will be put in the variable d. So some summary statistics on this uh, uh, exit variable is shown here. I will not explain in detail. What is important is that now we are able to calculate distances between data objects that we had in initial data file data1. And if I print the results, so, uh, they are shown here. So you can see these distances as in diagonal, main diagonal we have zeros, and then we have some distances, for example, between second object and first. First object we have distance approximately 1.5, between uh, third and first 1.28, and so on. So our data uh, initially were characterized by two data columns with two uh, variables, and uh, many uh, objects around 1,000. So with function dist, we were able to calculate pair distances between objects that will be used in further cluster analysis. Okay, the next one is function daisy. Function daisy. 
This is very similar function to dist, but it, it is more powerful function. It uh, allows to user many more uh, abilities and uh, special applications. For example, it can work not only with numeric, numeric data, but with uh, data or uh, features presented in different uh, variety, different data scales like in uh, nominal, ordinal, and so on. So the same example, uh, but first what we need to do, we need to uh, activate or load the library cluster because it's not uh, installed in the basic package. Then the second line, again, we launch the calculation of uh, distances between our objects. This is done with fu our function daisy. Again, you have uh, entrance parameters, data set one and the second technical parameter diag, which is in position two, which says how to present your data in line or in square table like we have at the end. Now, if I write summary, uh, or I would like to see the summary statistics on my data set, uh, my uh, distances. So I have some statistical data, which I don't want to explain here. But what is important, again, and uh, that this function daisy uh, can be used to calculate uh, pair distances or distance matrix. And it's often more usable than the classical dist function. So uh, today we had a short introduction to cluster analysis. We have studied main elements that will be used in our main lecture when we will consider different algorithms. Uh, we will consider uh, hierarchical, no, non-hierarchical algorithm and uh, these were important elements of these algorithms. Okay, let's uh, make some conclusions on the materi studied material. So the cluster analysis is devoted to partition of a set of elements without training. And the main types of clusters are bent with a center connected by jumpers with noise and overlapping. Uh, popular distance metrics for the data objects are Euclidean, city block, Minkowski, and Chebyshev. Uh, mathematical characteristics of a cluster are center, radius, and standard deviation. The main uh, functions for calculated distances between data objects are dist and daisy. These are uh, uh, main uh, material of our today's lecture. And to be more prepared for our main lectures, I would like to recommend it uh, for your further reading the next list of uh, literature sources. Uh, these literature sources you can find uh, in internet and in literature search. They are available and opened. So thank you very much for your kind attention to the material of this lecture. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>